the jerkin was also made of leather, and it was meant to protect the clothing of the wearer against the chafing of the armor. The jerkin should not be confused with the buff coat. The buff coat was much thicker and much more expensive. The spoilers are made of individual lanes, and spoilers like these provide more movement than polders would do. As you can see here, the spoilers are attached to the gorgia uh, by the way of rivets that have a degree of movement, as do the rivets in the individual lanes. As for the cuirass, individually known as the breast and backplate, they are pretty self-explanatory. What I can say is that, is that they generally have three uh, main ways of uh, fastening, in terms of buckles and straps, movable hooks, and stationary hooks. Most of them are also fastened with a waist belt, but the more expensive armors could have hooks in the side. About helmets, the most common helmet in this period in the Dutch standing army would be the Stormhut, also known as Pikeman's part, Swedish part or Dutch part. Some cuirasses could have hook on the back to hang the helmet from, but this is not a common feature. The tassets or thigh plates, they could be made from movable plates or one piece constructions. The one big plate type uh, is much more popular in the 17th century, but they still chose to have it look like uh, they had individual lanes. Now we're going to have a look at some movement with the armor so you can get an idea of the mobility. 